Okay, then uh, let's start with the Dataverse round. Uh, and the first project that is going to be presented is a, a Remetka project with all the Spanish metric repertoire projects and where it is by Jimena del Rio, which is, uh, she's coming from Buenos Aires, but she's, uh, well, she's part of the Spanish project since the beginning. So, Jimena, please. No? I think it's working. Okay. So I'm going to talk about the project we started in 2011, that is, the acronym is REMETCA, that is Repertorio de la Métrica Medieval Castellana, the metrical repertoire of medieval Castilian poetry. And we were three researchers here at UNED, Elena González Blanco, Clara Martínez Cantón, that is sitting here beside me, and me, who were working on metrics in different aspects. Clara was working in kind of more modern and contemporary metrics. Uh, Elena and I were two medievalists, more, one more interested in the Spanish one and aspects, and me in the Galician Portuguese lyrical poetry. So we started this project that was a kind of also a child of a big project that is the Historia de la Métrica Medieval Castellana, a big project led by uh, Fernando Gómez Redondo in which there were studied the theoretical aspects of the Spanish uh, medieval metrics. We wanted to add the technical and more specific related to the digital humanities aspects of, of the project. So we started Remetca working on our own and we started incorporating some um, uh, technologies that by 2011 weren't very much uh, in practice, mostly in Spain or the sp Spanish speaking countries, like the TI, uh, the model for verse, and in which we started researching on how to uh, use it more in the metrical, um, in, in, the, in the metrical aspects of it. And one interesting thing about Remetka is that it, it our, our intention was it that it had to grow in a very organic way. So the idea was not to keep the, the, pro, the project working without being just one single project led by one principal researcher, but we started thinking on how to add other projects. And in that way, other projects were born because of Remetka. One is a project that I started in Argentina in which we start the dialogical aspects of some poems that is called Dialogo Medieval, that follows all the TI aspects of Remetka, and Poetriae, another project led by Clara Martinez Cantón, in which like the um, um, theory treatises on poetry are studied. But the idea of this project is to reuse and to share all the developments that we have, and also to add more technologies and to share it, we started working on ontologies and also on the use of controlled vocabularies applied to poetry. And we also thought of uh, adding courses, specific courses on poetry, like the um, summer school we organized last year in which we studied technological aspects applied to poetry. So that is Remetka, and that is how Remetka turned into post data and why we are today here. So thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. So next uh, project is the Oxford Cantigas de Santa Maria, presented by Stephen Parkinson. No. No, right, yeah, right, no. that sounds much better. Okay, the Cantigas Santa Maria database as it was created 12 years ago. It is still growing. It, can it is about I say it is about rather than contains the 420 Cantigas de Santa Maria of Alfonso X. These songs, it's quite important, are mainly narrative poems narrating miracles, some are lyric poetry. The database contains information about the poetry. So it has summaries of narratives, it has descriptions of the, of the, of the illustrations, it has codicology, it has discography. It also has, at the moment, incidentally, the texts. The future plan, when the critical edition is finished, is to put all the texts, all the transcriptions online, as an XML text base inside what is now a, a, a MySQL PHP database. I think this is very important because 95% of my database is not about poetry. It is about narratives. But even so, it is, it will be, it is one which needs to be searched. It needs to be searched with the 
um, secular poetry databases, because these are two halves of the same poetry. So I'm looking forward very much to seeing how will, this will evolve. Thank you. OK, thank you very much. Our third project is the Nubona Etebus, presented by Levente Selaf from Hungary. But this is a French project. And well, Levente can tell us a lot about this kind of things. Thank you, Elena. Well, um, this project is uh, on medieval French uh, non-lyric strophic poetry uh, before 1400. Uh, this is a very neglected, rather small corpus of uh, around 700 poems, uh, and it has uh, been based on a, a previous work from the end of the 19th century, uh, made by a German philologist, and it was far from being completed uh, at his time. Uh, so, um, in the first step, the corpus uh, the, the, uh, had to be uh, augmented and, and, and completed and uh, totally updated. Um, actually, this project is, uh, uh, well, waiting to be continued because of a lack of uh, material, um, well, uh, background and uh, uh, simply of money and time for it. But uh, hopefully, uh, in the frames of uh, post data, uh, we can work uh, on it and I can uh, finish it. Uh, what I think is important that this database has two strengths. Uh, one of them is uh, really the, the, the depths of the rhetorical analysis of the, of the poems, uh, rhetorical and metrical analysis. And the other thing, which is interesting, that I'm trying to describe all uh, manuscript variants uh, separately. And it will be certainly discussed by us during these three days if it's a good way or not uh, to do this like this. And uh, what is a weakness, that it's not a full text database because many of the texts have never been edited, some others are very long, so it's a difficult task. So, thank you. Thank you very much, Levente. And I have to say, too, that uh, I didn't say before that Levente uh, organized a workshop in Budapest some years ago to, to discuss these first things of metrical issues. They published a number of the Ars Metrica journal with a questionnaire about the repertoires, and they did a lot of work that was very, very useful for the point that we arrived today. So he's not only the author of the Nubona Etebus and a big collaborator of the HPA, the Hungarian database, but also one of the heads of the of the project itself. And now you have to talk again. Sorry. The <laughs> RPHA uh, is not here. Uh, I will do it instead of him. He arrives only tomorrow, I think. Uh, so this is the, this abbreviation is for Repertoire de la Poésie Hongroise Ancienne, uh, Repertoire of Old Hungarian Poetry uh, prior to uh, 1600. Uh, as far as we know, it was the first um, online um, reper metrical repertoire uh, and poetical repertoire uh, made in, in different uh, steps. Uh, at the University of Szeged first and then Budapest in Hungary. Um, I think it's also very useful for us if we are enlarging uh, the, the, um, the field of um, um, poetical analysis to texts uh, of, of printed, that were uh, printed uh, so posterior to the manuscript uh, um, period of, of, of medieval times. Uh, because most of uh, the poems of this corpus uh, are conserved in printed books uh, of the 16th century, and it mm, mm, shall be uh, rather interesting. Uh, as to the further development of the RPHA, uh, there are two things. First of all, um, it, uh, they are working actually on linking uh, the poetical descriptions uh, to uh, the facsimiles, so the, the digital copies uh, of the sources in the National Library of Hungary. And the second thing is that uh, um, uh, a second step, the poems of the 17th century will be added to this. And it's a huge amount of texts, over 20,000 poems, so it's really a, 
a big corpus that will be integrated to this one. It's a smaller one, about 1,500, 600 poems only this uh, prior to 1600. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Levente. Next project is um, Peter Brachak from the Czech Republic, and he's going to speak about versology. Good morning. Uh, I'm going to say a few words on the. <coughs> is, it, is it okay like that? Yeah. Uh, on the corpus of Czech wares, uh, which is being built uh, at the Academy of Sciences in Prague since uh, 2011. Um, it contains more than 75,000 poems uh, from uh, about uh, 1,700 uh, books uh, of poetry, uh, of Czech poetry from the 19th century. So basically it covers uh, everything that uh, has been published in the Czech uh, in books, um, not talking about uh, journals or, or, or something like that. Uh, what, what, what we focus on mainly is, is the versification part. Uh, we did annotate uh, meters, whether whether they, it's iambic or trochaic. Uh, it's uh, worth noting that uh, Czech poetry is, is uh, pretty similar to German one. It's a, it's a syllabic accentual, so we we, uh, we got uh, you know trochies, iambics, dactyls, and so on. Uh, we have annotated rhymes, uh, of course, the stress patterns, and there's a phonetic transcription. Uh, morphological tagging tag tag and uh, lemmatization. This is a very, very uh, necessary uh, step. It's just, you know, uh, Czech is very, very inflecting language, so uh, the word forms uh, may, may uh, seem uh, very, very different. Uh, uh, currently, we, we, are, we are enlarging the corpus uh, by, by the data from the beginning of, of the 20th century. And uh, well, well uh, it's 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 a work for uh, another five years or something. Uh, you may find uh, further information uh, about the about the project or about the corpus uh, at versologia.cz uh, slash en, uh, which uh, is is the English mutation of the website, and you can get access to to the data contained uh, in the corpus by means of. Uh, those uh, free accessible online tools uh, located at the very, uh, very same website. Thank you very much, Peter. Yeah, every URL of the project on the map on the, on, the, uh, on the website of PostData. If you think that there is something lacking like or something wrong, just let us know and we will be happy to add them. So, okay. Next project is Anna Maitre. From France. Thank you. Uh, if you uh, want to do it in French, it's, it's okay. I can translate. In, uh, um, I will try in English, but okay. uh, uh, I apologize for my very bad English. Um, so the project uh, Anamètre um, started in uh, 2008. Uh, and uh, the, the associated uh, website, uh, Metric en Ligne, uh, in uh, 2012. Um, it is uh, developed uh, in uh, the lab Crisco uh, at the uh, University of Caen, France. Um, the corpus uh, analyzed is a versified uh, text from uh, the beginning to the 17th century. Uh, from the, the, the beginning of the 17th century to the beginning of the 20th century. Um, it contains uh, more than uh, 9,000 uh, uh, poems, um, 82 uh, dramas, um, nearly uh, 600,000 uh, verses, um, 66 uh, reference authors, uh, and uh, 254 uh, 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 collections. Um, the perspective of future uh, developments is uh, uh, an automated processing of a punctuometry. It's a mis mis method um, based on uh, uh, identification of um, punctuation signs. Um, and um, 
uh, the, the second topic, uh, which contains the first one, is um, automatic processing of uh, um, uh, concordance and discordance between meaning and uh, and uh, reason. It's, uh, it's a um, very complicated uh, topic to, to treat. Thank you very much and very welcome. Next project is the Lyric des Deutschen Mittelalters. Um, presented by Steph. Stephanie? Stephanie. Stephanie. Yeah, that's me. I'm LDM. That's me, at least for this workshop, it's me. LDM is um, the abbreviation of Lyrik des Deutschen Mittelalters, which uh, means um, poems in um, medieval German of the 12th and 13th century at the moment. Um, the project is both new and not so new. It's new because LDM started only eight weeks ago in January, but it's a follow-up project of a pioneer project um, which was LHM um, and which focused on a little bit of smaller corpus of medieval German poems. Um, the persons in charge, I've listed them, are situated at two universities in Germany, Manuel Braun in Stuttgart and Sonja Glauch and Florian Kragl in Erlangen. Sonja is the one that has designed the database and the programming language and the markup language. So I am quite sure it would be more useful for all of you if Sonja was here, not me, but she is at another workshop and um, she couldn't cancel. So they sent me and I will take all information back and uh, we'll meet in the first week of April to talk about. Huh? So I hope it's a little bit useful, at least for you, that you have me here. So the corpus is medieval German lyric um, in all three different genera, Minnesang, Sangspruch, Dichtung and Leich. Um, I don't think it's so important to explain the different sorts of texts. Um, what do we do? Um, we don't have plans to do a critical edition of medieval German lyric, but what we want to do is to show the different versions of the poems, the different versions in the different manuscripts. Um, and we provide different levels. Okay. So we provide transcriptions, digital reproductions, and different forms of edited texts, which means different levels of standardization, normalization, commentaries, and so on. But perhaps we can look at it in the afternoon in the database. The new project, LDM, is financed by DFG, and um, we have a financiation now for nine years, which is great, of course. Um, and yeah, we, we started now eight weeks ago, so all new. <laughs> Thank you so much that I can, that okay. I can learn <laughs> from all of you. Thank you very much. I'm very sure that we will, you will perfect represent the, the project. And that, yeah, well, as I said to you, this is a hands-on work. This is a very formal room, but we are working as a family. So don't worry, because you are part of the project and everybody will be working on on every part of the model. That's great. So now it comes the uh, MedDB, the Galician project, which will be presented by Carmen from Santiago. Okay. Good morning. Uh, my name is Carmen Santiago, and I am here as a representative of the project Lírica Profana Galego Portuguesa, uh, led by Mercedes Brean, Pilar Lorenzo Gradim, in the Centro Ramon Piñeiro para Investigación en Humanidades. Within the framework of, the, of this project, the MDB database is elaborated, which, as you know, it offers to all the interested people the complete corpus of the Cantigas uh, of Galician, of the Galician Portuguese troubadours. In 1990, 
eight, due to the publication Lirica Profana Galego Portuguesa, the platform was created. And last year, the third version uh, of the database was open to the public um, that offered, among other news, the possibility to perform uh, simple searches, the incorporation of all rubrics and colleges notes, and a simplification of the interface that entailed the agility of the searches and approach to all, the, to all type of users. Uh, now we are trying to improve this version, the updating of its contents, and we are trying to link this tool with uh, BIRMED, the bibliography database of the Mesonite Center. Okay, thank you very much. This perspective of linking your database with the other ones is also very interesting for us because we can share the, the ideas of the model that we are, you are using for doing that in order to see if we can also help or be helped by the, the solutions already found. So thank you very much. And the next project presentation will be the Finnish poetry, which is also very, very mysterious for us because, at least for me, Romance language is familiar. But Finnish literature is very, very difficult to understand, as it happens with the Hungarian. So you are very important for the project because we don't understand anything without you. And that's very <laughs> <laughs> nice. So I don't understand anything of your, your poetry. <laughs> Okay, uh, um, my name is Jukka Saarinen and I represent the Finnish Literature Society, which is actually uh, the place where the Finnish folk epi epic Kalevala was published first in 1835. Uh, 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 and that's the reason we call this, this, this poetry tradition the Kalevala-like poetry or the Kalevala metric poetry. It's folk poetry that has been written down from many informants in uh, during the uh, 19th and 20th century, in the beginning of the 19th century, and published first in, in, in books from 1908 to 1940-something. And uh, the, the, the digital project actually began in 1999 by digitizing the, the published edition, which is a very, very large book of 27,000 pages. And when it was uh, digitized, we formed an XML corpus out of that and, uh, and had an interface for that, and it was published in the internet in 2006. And we had an, uh, that was the first version of this database, and then the second database was published in uh, 2015, I think. And the date actually is the same, but we added a thematic index to that. that that's that's the, the big thing that was that happened between the between those two versions of that. It's a big database with 89,000 items or texts, and over a million poetic lines. Versus there are lots of search possibilities on that, and. Uh, most of the material actually housed in the in, in our archives, in the folklore archives, which we call now as the recent and contemporary cultural collection. But it was the folklore archives earlier, and I've been working there in that archive very long, and I'm a folklorist by, by, by my training. And uh, actually, we don't have a real project on that at, at the moment. Uh, we are working all the time. The Finnish Literary Society has been working with this, with these poems for for 180 years, and will be go, will be doing that still. And we have some plan. We have been planning to to connect, connect our database with the Estonian ones because the Estonians have basically the same tradition, and they have their own database and their own they repertoire there, which is very much the same we have in that. That's uh, and we have some other plans with with cooperation in in the, in the Baltic area too, but. Uh, not real approach at that moment. Maybe this is the beginning of something. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you very much. It's a great thing. So, uh, the Corpus de Trovadours, I don't know if we have somebody presenting. No, okay, yeah, the, uh, the responsible for this project is arriving this afternoon due to transportation reasons. So, it's Vicente Beltran, and the project is uh, hosted in the Institute de Estudis Catalan in Barcelona. 
although the leader, the current leader, works in the Sapienza University. So uh, he will speak more about the project uh, this afternoon, but I want to introduce that this is a corpus of troubadour poetry uh, produced in the, in, the, well, in the area of the north of Spain, southern France, during the Middle Ages. Okay, so we don't have any more slides, uh, but there are, there are a couple of projects that have been not presented at Porja. So I will give you, Cici, I will give the, the microphone to tell us what your project is about. It's a project about the Spanish poetry of the Golden Ages. Thank you. Good morning to everyone. Um, um, I'm Borja Navarro from the University of Alicante. Um, we are. Uh, I sent you the, the slide, but I don't know. <laughs> sorry for that. No, so, sorry, I sent it very late. But okay, uh, we have the the Atso project. Uh, we are developing a um, distant reading of the Golden Age Spanish sonnets. So uh, we have developed a corpus of sonnets with more than five five thousand. Sonnets, 500 sonnets. Um, they have been annotated with medical information. So for each line, uh, we relate each line with a sequence of st stressed or unstressed syllables. And we are, nowadays, we're introducing more linguistic information as the, the words, the lemas, or part of a speech. And in the future, uh, uh, we plan to, um, to add more authors, more sonnets, and to enrich the, the representation, the linguistic representation. And that's all. Thank you. OK. Thank you very much. And sorry for the slide, because I don't know how it was. <laughs> Didn't arrive. Okay, so is there anybody else that has a project that has not been presented in the room? I, okay, I don't think so, but I just wanted to mention about the other people that is here that has not been mentioned because uh, I want you to, to know who's who. Uh, I want to mention to you uh, that we also have our ongoing project by PhD students. There is Adriana and she comes from Barcelona. She's working on the poetry conductus uh, Latin medieval texts. And she's starting to build in a repertoire on this kind of poetry, which is also very linked to music. And she's one of the, well, let's say, the, the small sons of the project as she will build the repertoire according to the conclusions of our discussion today and our first model. So as the project intends to be able to offer a platform for researchers to build things, this kind of project may be able to be built on top of the model once we have agreed on how to encode all these kind of things. I want also to introduce you Sonia Tascon, which is also a PhD student. She's working on poetic vocabularies. And she will also have a very raw material for starting the dissertation after this uh, workshop. Patricia Garrido, which is also a PhD student, and is uh, starting also with the working with the data of the databases, and well, we ha will have to define the, the topic of the, of the work yet, but we, well, this is also a very, very interesting point on uh, the topics that can arise from this uh, collaboration. And uh, there are, this is also Elena Guzman, which is a colleague from the Classics Department, and she's working in opera. And we are also having strong links of the opera project with the poetry project, and we want to expand the models to this kind of poetry-related project and issues, which has to do a lot of mu with music and also with uh, materials which combine text and databases. And here is also Ana Garcia, which comes from the Computer Science School, and a couple of colleagues which are just outside working something uh, from the Computer Science School that will arrive later. Maria Lisa, which is there, is working also for post-data project. She's a computer scientist, and, but she's 
also half a philologist already, Mara, which is the project manager and uh, also the well, the real organizer of this thing, because I'm just no speaking. But if you are here, it's because of Mara, because she managed with all the travel agency, the food, and all the important things really to organize a workshop. So if you have any problem, don't ask me, ask Mara, and that's <laughs> that's also good. Yeah. Well, and Patricia too. Well, sorry, Patricia, who is coming from the from the Universidad Complutense, she she's a, a PhD student at the Complutense, but she's a, a very let's say a fan of what we are doing, and she is also coming to all of our workshops and activities. So, if there is anybody lacking for presentation, just let us know. But because what we want here is to have a very very informal ambience. And the thing is, if you have questions, raise your hands, interrupt us, and just let us know about what you think, if you don't agree, your opinion, if you are bored or something like that. Just a couple of practical questions. We will have a coffee here at 11.30 in order to, <laughs> organize, to, to, yeah, to have a better health. <laughs> and uh, toilets are over there. And we have also, well, if, uh, even though if you are not remaining for the afternoon session, uh, we will have lunch in the canteen, so we have tickets for lunch. If you want to come for lunch and you are not taking part of the second session, you are also invited to come. So just let us know and we will, okay. So